beautiful, still summer morning. God has definitely blessed us with what uh, looks like a great forecast for the next few days on this Labor Day weekend. If you're here visiting and this is your first time, we're happy to have you here to worship with us this morning. Um, I know for a lot of us, this last week was a little bit of a break because the week before we had VBS and it was a lot of fun busyness, right? <laughs> and so I thought it was important to kind of continue the theme of v VBS a little bit because um, I'm still wearing my Watch for God bracelet and I was out this week and I saw a God moment that I thought, okay, I better share this. And as a lot of the volunteers know, there was one thing when we, when Miss Heather gave the mic to the kids, what was your God sighting this week? What did you see today? And 75% of them said, deer. a deer and baby deer. So on Friday morning, I was out running near my house and I come around the corner and there's a mama deer and two baby deer. And I just chuckled to myself because I was like, oh, there's my watch for God moment. But what was really cool for me in that moment was I was reminded of the VBS week. And so for the next five to ten minutes as I finished my run, I prayed for all those kids that were at VBS. And so I just want to encourage you as we're upon the new school year, if you're driving your car, and it could be for a five-minute drive, it could be for an hour drive, if you see a deer on the side of the road, take a minute and pray for those kids. Because that's something that obviously touched their lives during the week. And I think we have a great opportunity in this season of the beginning of the school year to pray for kids for that watch for God moment. So I'd, I'm going to open up with that, but I just want to encourage you as well during the beginning of the school year here. We have a pretty busy Sunday morning. We're going to have, um, again, kids. So we're going to want to pray over our kids and the teachers that are going back to school next week. Um, we also have some child dedications that we're going to be praying for or for the kids this morning as well. Um, so I'm just going to open up in prayer and hand it off to the, the worship team. So if you don't mind standing with me and we'll open up in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for, for those watch for God moments that we all have during our week, Lord. We just give you thanks for the many blessings you, you give us in those, those moments, Lord. And I just pray as we come ac across those God moments that we just lift you up and praise you and thank you. I ask that you just bless the service, bless the fellowship we're going to have, Lord. And we just ask that we draw closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody. Glad to see you. Let's, uh, let's take a few minutes and worship together. Uh, praise God for, for the great God that he is. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. And the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care and when all of life is over and the work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder i'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder 
When the road's called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting Creation 
subject to his reign. Holy is our God, holy is your name, mighty are your works and deeds and wondrous far your ways. All that you have made shall return and I heed not, 
riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only be first in my heart. High King of heaven, thy treasure thou art. And High King of heaven, when victory won, may I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O We're going to do verse one. It's going to be all our voices, okay? So we'll have we'll have, they'll help us, but let's do verse one again and say as a, sing it as a prayer. Be thou my vision. Be thou oh, my vision, O Lord of my life. Not be all else to me. Save that thou art, thou my best portion by day or by night, waking or sleeping, my presence, my life. Jesus, this morning we pray. Be our vision. Amongst everything that happens around us, uh, the world, the, the circumstances of life, the trials of life, let us look unto you. Be our vision, Lord Jesus. Looking unto him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. This morning we pray for those who uh, would stumble or those that are downcast or those that have uh, trials and tribulations. Come, Lord Jesus, intervene and be a part of every life and every circumstance here this morning. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you blessing. And we pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Jesse's going to read. For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. Zephaniah 317. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to, uh, how do we want to do this? We want to pray so, so school starts next week. So maybe if you have a seat, let's do it this way. We don't want to put anybody in. Uh, anybody who's. Going to school next week, stand up, please. That would be younger generation, most of you. <laughs> there must be more. There we go. Okay. Now, who else, anybody that's going to work in the school system, homeschool, that would be homeschool moms. Homeschool moms, stand up. There must be others. Wow. 
They're busy. <laughs> They're working on their lesson plans. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we really, we pray, we want to pray uh, for those going into the school schools this week, the young people as they go to school for God's grace and protection. Uh, learning is a God thing. <laughs> and we, we learn about who God is. Uh, and all of the things in this world and this this life that we live that are connected to our creator. And so um, so this morning, we're just going to take a moment and pray that God's hand would be on teachers and students uh, as this this next week begins. So, Lord Jesus, we we acknowledge you. You are the fountain of all truth, all life and all learning. So, Lord, we pray this week as our teachers and our students workers at the school, uh, this local school and schools all around this nation, Lord. We pray for your grace. We pray for your presence. We pray for your still small voice to bring truth and life to hearts. We pray for protection. We pray for the ability for the children to learn well and to grow in the things, uh, the knowledge of God and the knowledge of your creation. So, Father, we give you thanks we give you praise, and we ask for your grace and your blessing over each one, and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, so we're, what, uh, Brian is going to be doing some announcements in a minute, so I've got to be careful I don't go into announcements. Um, but uh, we're glad everyone's here today. Um, this is going to be, we are, there's a few reasons, but we're, this is going to be our last Sunday outdoors um, for this year, but uh, we're, we're glad that we have good weather and that the, the uh, so far, uh, the sun's starting to come out. So what we want to do is we're going to dedicate children today, and I'm just going to talk about that a little bit before I ask the families to come forward. Um, so we live, we live in a time which... It, it's kind of shocking, actually, <laughs> where there's even a debate about whether parents <laughs> have uh, authority about what's taught to their children. It, it's, I never thought I would hear this, but we live in a time where there's some that believe that parents do not have authority and rights over their children. Um, but in Scripture, it's very clear how God has designed children to grow and to learn and to be a part of uh, this world. And it's true. Uh, the upbringing, a godly upbringing, and uh, the input of parents, ideally both. Uh, but God is, is, this is such an important thing that God, uh, or principle in God's kingdom, that parents raise and input and impart to children the things of the kingdom, that God also speaks strongly about orphans and those without parents, that the church is a part of that, that it's important that the, the children are uh, given uh, learning and are cared for and taken care of. And so dedication is an acknowledgement of that. Um, Psalm 127, verse 3 says, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. This is a principle in Scripture, right, that children are a gift of the Lord. And so what we understand is, is that if God has given to them, them to us as a gift, then we have a responsibility and we cherish and value. But the interesting thing is, is one way we do that <coughs> is we give them back to God. Isn't that this is a principle we see throughout Scripture? And of course, child dedication uh, kind of goes back in Old Testament roots to Hannah, who prayed for a child, and when she had uh, given birth, the child was Samuel, and Hannah came and brought Samuel to the temple and dedicated his life to the Lord in thanksgiving for the gift that God had given her. I don't know if I have that passage, but maybe, yeah, there's a lot, Hannah has quite a speech in there, but this this particular passage says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition that I made to him. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is lent to the Lord. 
Hannah brought young Samuel, the infant, to be dedicated in the temple. Samuel became a mighty man of God, right? Two books of the Bible. He anointed two kings over Israel. He was a priest. He was a prophet. He was a judge. Samuel was an amazing uh, person in, in our biblical history, and I believe there's much to be said, and the reason being is that Hannah, the mother, dedicated as a young child Samuel to the Lord. Um, I said to uh, our Samuel over here, I said, we're going to talk about a guy named Samuel today, and I, I said, do you know what his mother's name is? Samuel didn't know, but Bodhi did. <laughs> Bodhi did. He said, it's Hannah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but what a blessing and a privilege it is that we have, that God gives us children, and he invites us to bring them back to him. And one reason we do that is because, guess what? If you're a parent, I'm, gonna, I gotta, I'm not used to chords. Um, you don't, we don't have all the wisdom in the world. Did you know that? <laughs> I think I forget someone said once, you know, they raised, they said, this is the first time I've ever done this, raise a child, right? It's, it's all new to me. When we give them back to God, there's an opportunity to invite him in to how we raise our children and, and how they live before God. So uh, roughly that's what, <clears throat> so we give them back to God because they're God's gift to us. Family lineage is important. Paul, uh, Paul talked about Timothy and how uh, his family lineage was a part of who he was, his godly heritage. And so we, we view that as, as, a, as a key part and also the household of God. That's one reason we do this in the church. The household of God supports and participates and uh, prays for and encourages families. That's what we do. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. We just recently did vacation Bible school. Last week I talked about the importance of children. We're here again, but children, the importance is, is that families is where children are raised, where God imparts his values and his purpose into their lives. So it's, it's a huge principle in the kingdom uh, of God. Um, so I think I'm going to invite families to come forward that are going to dedicate their children. This is, this is, uh, it's not a, what we consider an assurance of salvation. What it is, it's parents publicly saying, we are choosing to raise our children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Um, and I, as I said, in the culture that we're in, this is a significant thing. Can I tell you that? <laughs> for, for these parents and for these children, this is significant. It's not just a formality, but there's, there's something in it that God does. And I believe it mostly, should have worn my other mic here, but um, there's something in this that God does, and it's in the hearts of parents um, that, that there's a work that goes on. There's a choosing to dedicate their children unto Christ and to live a life that is... Um, so we're dedicating all your children? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, that's all right. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's all right. Um, it's all good, yeah, because we can do it more than once, right? Um, but the, the principle is... Parents are choosing to bring their children to Christ. And we're going to talk about a little bit more in the message what that looks like. But uh, in Luke chapter 18, it says uh, they were bringing infants to Jesus that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw, it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them, saying, let the children come to me and do not hinder them <clears throat> For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And one more passage in Luke 2. This is Jesus as a baby. 
When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The significance is, I'm not going to set that down, is that Bruce has to hurry up. Um, the significance is children didn't come on their own, right? They were brought to Jesus. And so that's a, like the basic element of what we talk about when we talk about dedication is parents bring their children and present them to Christ. And then there's a lifetime pattern of living for Christ that is exemplified in their lives. So can I have gen some other elders, anybody that wants to come and pray? Uh, we would just want to bless them. I'm going to charge the parents. As I said, this is not akin to baptism. This is parents um, making a commitment to raise their children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Um, um, this is a great looking group, eh? So I'm not sure. So Russell, <laughs> we're dedicating them all, uh, Jovi and Oliver, and we're rededicating all of it. <laughs> Tom is standing in support as a, and Kenneth and Thomas, right? Just Kenneth. Yeah, Thomas we did. That's right. So, uh, yes, and they do it here before the congregation because it's a public statement. So I'm going to give you a charge. And so this is to the parents. And we can all you can all answer at once. If, you, if you're saying no to any of this, please speak loudly, because I'm going to assume it's not too long. Do you commit, parents, to raise your child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, to discipline and correct, not out of displeasure, but for their profit? Do you endeavor to live godly lives? modeling Christ as preeminent in all that you do? And will you lay up for their future spiritually, emotionally, and physically as the Word of God teaches us? Lord, we're going to pray. We're going to lay hands on the... And here's the other thing. The parents are making a commitment, and it's huge. I just, I just have to say that. I've, I've, in the last few years, I've understood in a greater way how this is a really important spiritual step for parents. And so we're praying for them, but we're also praying for God's covering and blessing on children uh, throughout their lives. You know, David prayed, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So, Lord, today we pray for this family. We thank you for their hearts to serve you, their heart to bring their children to you, Lord. We just ask for your grace over their home. We pray for your wisdom and your counsel to be their portion. We pray, O oh God, that you would just bless and bring life everlasting into the hearts of these children through their parents. We just thank you for it, Lord. We pray for your goodness and mercy to follow them all the days of their life. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you. I thank you for Tom and his family, Lord. We thank you that you have you have established and are establishing kingdom principles in each of their lives, serving. And Lord, uh, over time, you're doing miraculous things. And we just praise you for that. We pray for your continued grace and blessing over this family, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just pray that life eternal through Christ would be their portion. And we thank you for it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hi, Russell. Lord, we bless Russell today and each of the children here, Lord, uh, that they would grow in wisdom and in stature and closer to the grace of your throne, Lord Jesus. 
Lord, that your presence would be their portion. Lord, we pray for Chris and Hannah, Lord, as they come and as they they bring these children to you, that you would be their portion. So I thank you for that. Let your covering, let your covering be their portion. Let your goodness fly as a banner over their lives and over their home. And we thank you for it. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. For Oliver, Jovi, we thank you for their lives. We thank you that you're a God who provides. Lord, I thank you that you have uh, shown yourself strong on their behalf and this family, Lord, that you have shown yourself as a good God to this family. And so, Lord, we pray for their lives today. We pray that you would be their uh, guide, you would be their shepherd, you'd lead them beside still waters. Lord, that your hand of goodness would be over them, that your Holy Spirit would be their covering and their protector. Bless their home. Bless their hearts as they don't know what to do on certain times when that happens, Lord. Just let them let them know that you are there and you are able and you are empowering them to be the godly parents you've called them to be. And so we thank you for that. We praise you for that. Let's stand up, church, if we could, because there's a charge to the church. And I want you to reach your hands out. So we as the church agree to support, to pray, to strengthen, to walk beside, to love preeminently these families. Lord, we pray for them as the church, as the body of Christ here, as they come and they make a confession that they are bringing their children to you. Their desire is that their children will be raised in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Father, we stand with them as the people of God. The strength of the body of Christ, we stand with them and we bless them and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, you guys. God bless you all. Thank you for praying. Um... Good morning again, everybody. Um, I get to do the announcements, but I just, I thought what we just did was a perfect segue. Am I not on yet? Good morning. Is that better? Um, I thought the prayer that we just did was a perfect segue for the, our first announcement, which is about our building and what God has planned for the space that we're all sitting on. Um, to have that many families represented up front is what the vision of the church should be, is to bring in new young families that we can bless and that just grows our community, right? I mean, to me, that's pretty powerful to, to have that representation. But if you look around, there's a lot of people here. And if we were all inside right now, we would be shoulder to shoulder with little space. And thankfully, God's vision is much bigger than our, our own. And... Um, get my little red sheet out here for this one over underneath our um, connection tent over here um, there's these red sheets are just an update on our building and the building fund and what we've raised um, this week I think it was last week we actually sent out to five different companies um, a request for bids for phase one of the building project which would be to if you look at these trees all these trees are coming down. Where we're sitting on slopey ground will all be leveled flat. Then we will pour a foundation, and then th the structure of the building would come up. That's not the inside of the building or anything like that, but that phase one is to actually get a physical structure up. Um, so yeah, that, that happened this, this week. Those bids went out, and we're hoping by the end of 
the second week in September, those bids will be coming back in, and we can then prayerfully look at what is presented to us and see where we're at. Um, so there is movement, and we're trusting God, and we're going to move forward. Um, one of the things that we're going to do to help continue fundraising is to have a silent auction in January. And there's some more, again, information underneath the tent. But the intent is that um, we're going to be reaching out to local businesses to see if they would be willing to donate, let's say, a night at a hotel. Or if folks here are willing and interested in um, donating, obviously, monetarily. But if you would like to purchase something for the silent auction, that is also something we would be um, we encourage you to reach out to Pastor Bruce. Um, in my mind, I'm just throwing this as an example. Like, let's say it's a, uh, a new iPad. That would be part of the silent auction. So um, just be prayerfully thinking about ways that you might be able to assist in, in the vision of picturing no trees here in a building. So we can have even more families standing up here a year from now or two years from now. Because ultimately, it's not about just today. It's about the future. Um, and we trust that God's got a great, great future for High Peaks Church. So there's that. Now, this being our last Sunday outside, um, I was asked to make an announcement. Um, all the sound equipment that you see up on the stage and the chairs and different things, um, we're going to try to pack away. So hopefully in a couple weeks when they whoever wins this bid wants to come and start taking stuff down. Um, if we could have a few extra hands after the service today, we're going to actually bring the sound equipment back inside. Um, so many hands makes light work, so I appreciate anybody that's willing to stick around and help with that. Um, next week we have um, Baptism Sunday. If you are interested in being baptized, there is a sign-up sheet under the welcome flag over here by the, the poll. Um, and also on that is um, if you are not plugged into a life group, there is a sign up for that. Next Sunday after the service, we're, we call it our bagel Sunday, where the different life groups that are represented will be there um, to connect um, if you're interested um, in finding even more about what that is. So we just encourage you to um, stick around next Sunday for that. I think that is all I have for my announcements. So if you don't mind, we're just going to stand and um, take up our tithe and offering um, and continue our worship with that. Oh, there is Kids Church inside. Please, if you have a child that you're bringing in, please walk in with them and sign them in and sign them out after the service. We appreciate that. Um, so again, we're going to pray for our offering. Lord, we just thank you for the many blessings you provide us, Lord, especially financially. We just ask that you continue to touch those families that are in need, whether it's financially. Lord, we ask that you use our tithes and offering to further our community and our building fund, Lord. I ask that you just be with the teachers and Pastor Bruce as they share messages with the youth and the adults, Lord. We just ask that you bless the remainder of our service. In Jesus' name, amen. Lift up his name within the sanctuary. Lift up his name among the people who are gathered here to sing his praise. Who are gathered here to sing his praise. Holy is our God. Holy is your name. Mighty are your works and deeds and wondrous are your ways. And all that you have made shall return and give you glory, Lord. The earth and sky, the sea and all that is them this universe beyond the sight of mortal men all subject to his reign all creation subject to his reign holy is our god holy is your name and mighty are your works and deeds 
Words and wondrous are your ways, and all that you have made shall return and give you glory, Lord. The great I am, no end and no beginning, you were and are. And evermore you shall be, all my days are in your hands. All my days are in your hands. Holy is our God, holy is your name. Mighty are your works and deeds and wondrous are your all that you have made shall return and give you glory. Holy is our God, holy is your name, mighty are your works and deeds and wondrous are your ways. All that you have made shall return and give you glory, give you glory, give you glory, Lord.
Okay, Gordy. <clears throat> Gordon. Gerda. Testing one, two, three. Okay. Gather in. We, uh, Okay, I have a couple couple things I just want to add before we uh, we're gonna have kind of a not too long of a message here. Um, we were actually planning on communion today, but I felt like we had so much in our agenda that we backed up on that. We're going to serve communion. We have the communion. We're gonna serve it on Thursday night. Um, so usually we have evening prayer the first Sunday of the month we will not do evening prayer tonight because we have Dennis Balcom uh, he's a missionary from China will be here Thursday night at 6 30 um, I just you know, so we're gonna it'll be <coughs> simpler uh, gathering but Dennis is going to share I have never met him Don says he's a wild and crazy guy <laughs> Don Curry, but I do know, you know, I have, I've, I've read about and looked at some of the things he's done in China. He went to China in 1969 um, and worked with the underground church there for quite a while. And of course, then the church became, a, uh, didn't have to be underground, but he still, he has a church in Hong Kong and uh, he still is very active in that area. Um, it's been there a long time. He, you know, smuggled Bibles in. He was smuggled himself into Chinese villages in a coffin. Um, he, so, you know, to 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 be in a in a in a missionary apostolic sense like he was there, you got to have some boldness in the Holy Spirit <laughs> to do what he's done. From what I can read and what I've seen, so so he will be here um, Thursday night at 6:30 p.m. And as I said, it'll be a simpler. We're going to uh, maybe just sing a couple songs, break bread, and then Dennis is going to share. Um, he'll also be in Malone. He'll be um, in Plattsburgh for their sixth anniversary weekend at New Testament Church Plattsburgh. Uh, sixth or seventh? I can't remember now. Sixth or seventh anniversary. Praise God for that. It's a strong, full church. Uh, High Peaks Church contributed to that church plant and helped with that uh, for a couple of years and uh, so yeah so that's a great great thing so Dennis Balcom missionary to China he'll be here Thursday night I encourage you you know probably if you come I, I was thinking you know what might happen you might get infected with this thing that would encourage you to lay down your life for Jesus in a greater way that's my impression of his ministry, <laughs> um, that he lives it in a place of surrender that challenges us um, and challenges people to live for Christ in a different way. So that's my impression. I've never heard him. I've listened to a little bit of uh, on uh, online. So that's this Wednesday or Thursday, 630 p.m. No prayer tonight, um, just just so everybody knows. 
The other thing I wanted to mention, Jerry and Kathy are going back to Florida. We're going to miss them. And, uh, and that, no, I shouldn't clap, should I? I should be, sorry. Uh, but they're leave, this is their last service with us. So I wanted to, uh, I don't know, can we bring you up front for a moment? That's all right. Come on right up. Just These guys are, uh, so Kathy, um, they're here for a shorter window all the time, it seems. <laughs> but they're here in the summer and Florida in the winter. Um, Kathy has done a lot of work on the grant uh, application and just, she has such wisdom about fundraising. I just wanted to give her credit for everything she's done. Jerry, too, of course. He, he supports her. I'm sure all he speaks. In, but, um, and they're a blessing. Uh, they're a blessing to the congregation and uh, home, home group, etc. Their wisdom and their counsel in the word uh, is good. Uh, we love that. So we just want to bless you guys. Thank okay? You. okay? Lord, we just thank you for Jerry and Kathy. And as they go, we ask for your grace to go with them. Holy Spirit, that you would be their portion in all that they do, Lord, that their hearts, their sensitivity of their hearts would grow greater and greater to your purpose, your will, that your Holy Spirit would give them health and uh, vitality in all that they do. We pray for safety as they travel. We pray for their families. Be glorified, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 May I ask you a prayer for the grant? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Dear Holy Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that you give us to be a part of this beautiful body, the body of Christ. Father, we're calling upon you now to open the doors, Father, to shower out the blessing of uh, financial support through the grant with this foundation, God. We know it's your work, and we're committing this whole, whole situation to you, Father. Yes. Just uh, let the words flow. Give us great, great favor with the funders, Father, because we're, all of this is being done for your glory. And we praise you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. So, Brian, thank you, Kathy. And that's, that's right. We need to continue to pray. And um, as I said, Kathy's been such an encouragement. Uh, as we look at fundraising, it's it's not not my specialty, in case you didn't notice. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're Brian shared we're we're moving forward. Uh, bid applications or bid packages have gone out, and we're expecting now if all the bids come back like you know way high, then we're going to reevaluate. But if, so when we get them, that's what we need to pray about too: is that God would give us favor in the bidding process. So we can we can be moving forward. Um, one reason we're going back in is so you can all see how crowded it is up there. <laughs> Just kidding. That's not one reason. <laughs> but the reality is, yeah, when we you, all of the, these people in that room up there gets really full really quick, and so uh, that's what we that's why we're doing what we're doing, and uh, we're praying praying continuously that God would just open those doors. We did have good news. Uh, you know, we were a little concerned that the grant application, because of if we're in process, will they still allow us to apply? And we got a message back the other day, yes. So, so at least that's a positive in that, that we can still apply, even if we start some of the work. As long as it's not all completed, we're still eligible. So that's good. And, you know, God has a way of providing. But um, when we go in, we, we, we're considering, we're trying to under, figure out if we need to start doing two services uh, in the fall, which is challenging. Um, but at the same time, we need to have room for when people show up <laughs> that they can come to church. I'm not sure how that will all look or work, but you can pray about that. Maybe... Uh, um, you know, we might even send out a, a questionnaire about it. But the, the moral of the story is we need space. And it's pretty fairly evident that that's the situation. So that's a lot of extra commentary before the message. But thanks for listening. Um, <clears throat> so we...
talked last week from Matthew chapter 11, and we did child dedication today, and I was going to tie this in. It is tied in, but I uh, we um, kind of directly to the dedication. Um, but I will say, uh, I want this, this applies to everyone. It's not just about children, but we spoke last week from the passage in Matthew 11, where Jesus talked about things that were hidden from the wise and understanding, but revealed to children. Um, what, what a wonderful concept, uh, in, in, in the, the gospels that the, the humble, the lowly, is the place where grace lands. <laughs> I like that. Um, and so we talked about that last week. Jesus shares that, Father, I thank you that you reveal this to the lowly, um, to children, and you've hidden them from the wise and understanding. And then it's down a couple verses. We have this great passage from Matthew eleven twenty eight: 28. Come unto me. All who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I just want to say, as I read that, if you have an image of God that wants to put a heavy burden on you, that's not the image that God, that's not who God is. That's not the message of the gospel. In fact, the message of the gospel is burdens are lifted. Uh, the burden of trudging through life and wondering and trying to figure it out is lifted in the grace of God coming to us in the person of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. So, uh, come unto me. It's an invitation, and I've talked about that many times. So we talked about this last week, but I want to go back there for just a minute and then move forward. Because I realized after, you know, Jesus in the Gospel of John, there's numerous I am statements of Jesus. Right. I am the way, the truth and the life before Abraham was. I am. And of course, we understand when Jesus made an I am statement, it was a statement of his divinity that he was God. I am the great I am. That's what we know from the Old Testament. Uh, I am uh, uh, the resurrection and the life, etc. There's numerous I am statements. But I never realized, and after I uh, shared from here, this is an I am statement here. What does he say? I am gentle and lowly in heart. That's another I am of Jesus. It's a very... Um, definitive statement about his heart i am gentle and lowly in heart what a beautiful and wondrous concept that is and that's what we talked about last week that jesus calls us to come to himself um, and to learn of his heart you know i grew up in maybe and maybe many of you did in kind of a rigid religious understanding of grace. Uh, I was so joyous. I remember singing early on in my Christian career. We used to sing, I, for, I, for I know that God is for me, not against me. What a revelation that is for us, that God isn't against us, he's for us, and that he is not uh, domineering and mean, and a, he is gentle and lowly in heart. I am. And so I wanted to kind of look at this a little bit further. Um, his heart is gentle and lowly. It's hidden to the proud and arrogant, but it's revealed to humble children. The question is, who gets to know Jesus in this fashion? Who gets to know Jesus in the gentle and lowly manner that he depicts himself here. Of course, we see it all through Scripture. And of course, the answer is, those who are yoked to him learn of his nature. And I, you know, I don't want to cast 
I have to be careful because. But sometimes I've seen people that are Christians that are not real gentle. And lowly in heart. And I think about it and I think. Why? How is that? That there could be such arrogance or such animosity sometimes. And I I have to be careful because I don't want to be part of that myself. And I can only come to the conclusion that they're not yoked to Christ (laughs) in the way that Jesus, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. What are we going to learn when we're yoked to him? That he's humble, gentle, and lowly in heart. He's meek. And so this this, uh, reality of knowing Christ um, I'll just read this. Those who are yoked to Christ know him, know his heart, and are transformed by his heart. That's how we're transformed. We're not transformed because of the fear of God. We're not transformed because of uh, whatever legalistic pattern we want to take. We're transformed through knowing the heart of God for us as lost individuals. We often speak of and hear of the majesty and authority of God, His power, His transcendence, the cross, the problem of sin. Yes, they're all there. It's all part of it. But the backdrop of the whole story of creation in the gospel is love, mercy, gentleness, and meekness. Isn't that amazing? The mighty God the one who speaks and the mountains quake and tremble, the one who, whose voice uh, brings terror in certain areas, but is, he is a God that's full of grace and mercy. This is the message of the gospel. And this is, and this is where I, I thought about this, what our children need to hear. Our children need to know God is mighty awesome if you were to stand before him you would fall on your knees but at the same time he's full of mercy and grace he is gentle and lowly in heart the story of creation the story of the gospel is a story of love mercy gentleness and meekness Pardon me. Jonathan Edwards. Does anybody know who Jonathan Edwards is? He preached that famous sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. He was a mighty theologian. Pardon me, a revivalist, but he's known most for that sermon because he was describing the majesty, the authority, the power of God, and actually the weakness and the frailty of mankind before this God. But Jonathan Edwards understood grace also in a way that we don't always understand. And he, I read about this. He wrote a sermon for children. Um, trying to see if I have the title of it here. He preached, Jonathan Edwards preached a sermon to children. It's called, Why Children Should Love Jesus Christ Above All Things in This World. Why children should love Jesus Christ above all things in this world. This was his sermon. This is the one who did the the famous fire and brimstone preacher. But he has this message to children. And you know what the message is? Because Jesus is the full expression of all the beauty of God. That in him, all the goodness of God is, is contained.
his sermon, why, why Children Should Love Jesus Christ Above All Things in This World, he used the phrase or the passage from Matthew 10, 37, which is kind of a challenging passage. And it says, anyone, I have to look at my time, anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's what Jesus said. And so Jonathan Edwards used this passage to teach why children should love Jesus Christ above all things in this world. Now, we know we are to love and honor our parents. We're to walk in love with all people, even our enemies. But the love for Christ is based upon an understanding of His love for us, right? It's preeminent. If we love Christ first, if we love Him more than anything else, that sets the stage for everything that happens in our life. And so he was explaining that children need to learn this and live in this. The love of God. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Now, we've all heard that. Or if you've watched a football game, you've seen, you've seen that passage. What it tells us is the foundation of the gospel is love. The foundation of what Jesus Christ came to do was love. His love is more immense and beautiful and powerful than we can imagine. We have a tendency to turn it into legalism. But the foundation of the gospel is love. Romans chapter 5 says, uh, God commends His love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How does God show His love? When I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. 1 John chapter, maybe 4, I don't know, I didn't put it in here. But it says, we love Him because He first loved us. Um, children and adults should love Jesus Christ above all the things in this world. Because he is preeminently worthy of all of our love. That is quite a thought. That's something that we, we need to learn and understand. Here's what something John, Jonathan Edwards wrote. He says, he is more lovely in himself. He is one that is greater and higher than all the kings of the earth, has more honor and majesty than they, yet he is innately good and full of mercy and love. There is no love so great and so wonderful as that which is in the heart of Christ. Isn't that amazing? You see, sometimes I think about my message. When I say my message, my overall, the way I preach, the way I talk to people. But I think for me, and some people have told me I need to talk about sin more. Nobody here, of course. Um, I'm excited about the glory of Jesus Christ. I'm excited about the person of Jesus Christ, the amazing majesty of the creator of heaven that has come to earth and he speaks love and mercy and grace to us. This is what I want you to get excited about. This is what I believe truly changes our lives. This is... This is what I'm excited about, who Jesus is. Every beautiful thing we see around us is just a small piece of who Jesus is. Every good and beautiful thing that happens on this earth is a little bit of, of what Jesus is in the universe. He is pure. He is beautiful. He is glorious. He is grace. He is mercy. He is truth. He is all of these things. And he loves me, even while I was still a sinner. This is what gets us excited. This is why Jonathan Edwards says children and adults should love Jesus Christ above everything else in the earth. Because every beautiful, glorious, wonderful thing on this earth is a part of who Jesus is. He spoke into creation. He speaks. He is the one. He's restoring all things. He's life. He's truth. All wisdom is contained in him. Oh, to know Him 
a little better. Oh, to be yoked to him, right? To be yoked to that one. The one who is the master of all creation, yet he's meek and he's lowly. And he says, if you'll just come and yoke yourself to me, you're going to find some greater depths of love and mercy and truth. Everybody jump up and shout, yes! (laughs) But that's what I get excited about. He is beautiful, he's glorious, and he calls us to be yoked to him and to learn of him. For he says, I am lowly and gentle in heart. How can that be? How can that be? Charles Wesley wrote that, that hymn, Amazing Love, and can it be that thou, my God, would die for me? Amazing love. We children should love Jesus Christ above anything else in this world. He's not saying don't love your parents. He's saying you need, if you really understood who Jesus was, you would love him more than anything on this earth. He is preeminent. He's glorious. He's beautiful. Okay. This is another Jonathan Edwards quote. It says, He is one that delights in mercy, who Jesus is. He is ready to pity those that are in suffering and sorrowful circumstances as one that delights in the happiness of his creatures. Remember we read a couple weeks ago, he came and he saw the people and he said he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were scattered and helpless. What does Jesus have for that person? Compassion. Compassion. He's ready to pity those that are suffering. The love and grace that Christ has manifested does not as much exceed all that which is in this world as the sun is brighter than a candle. Did you get that? The love that Jesus has exceeds everything in this world just like the sun is brighter than a candle. (laughs) We can't fathom the love of Christ. We can't fathom His power. We can't fathom His mercy. We can't understand the greatness of His mercy towards His people. But that is who He is. Parents are often full of kindness towards their children. But that is no kindness like Jesus Christ's kindness. We can't do it as good as Jesus. Try, parents. (laughs) Please be kind. (laughs) But nothing matches the kindness, the grace, the love, the mercy that is in Jesus Christ for our children and for our lives and those around us, our family. The love that a parent has is no kindness like Jesus' kindness. I already shared this. It says it. But this, if I can share with you the beauty and the glory of Christ, and you can know it and experience it, If you can understand that everything which is wonderful and beautiful in this world (laughs) is a reflection of Christ. Isn't that something? Everything that is wonderful and beautiful in this world is a reflection of Christ. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light. In Him there's no variable or even hint of turning. In other words, there's not a hint that there's anything that's not good in Him. Everything you see that's beautiful, true, and good, and righteous, and joyous is a reflection of Jesus Christ on this earth. And I'll say this. Anything ugly and distasteful comes from a rejection of Christ. In other words, when we see misery, we see woe, we see there's, there, it comes from a rejection of Christ. Beauty comes from Christ. The distasteful things, the things we see that disturb us and try us, those things come from a rejection of who He is. We live in a culture 
it always has been to some degree rejecting Christ. But I'm, I'm, I'm just, we see it more and more prevalent, it seems like, in the time that we're in. A rejection of Christ produces bad fruit. When we look to Christ, we see there's, there's blessing, there's glory, there's grace, there's goodness. So a rejection of Christ, everything ugly and distasteful comes from a rejection of Christ. I've said this before, but what I see in the world around us and a rush away from faith, a rush away from the Christian message There's an emptiness that results in that because there's nothing to replace it. You can say, oh, we've moved on from that. We've, okay, what have you moved on to? <laughs> what have you replaced Christ with that's more beautiful than the person of Jesus Christ? It doesn't happen. And then our culture looks around and says, what's going on? Everything ugly and distasteful comes from a rejection of Christ. Everything wonderful and beautiful and pure and true comes from Christ and is a reflection of Christ. So I would ask today, what is your Savior like? Is He kind and gentle as we see in Scripture? Or is he a savior that's waiting for you to cross the line so he can straighten, straighten you out? <laughs> my my uh, belief is, if that's our image of the authoritarian, now there's clearly lines, there's clearly things in Scripture that, but Christ calls us to be transformed through his love. If it's just a matter of, okay, I'm keeping the rules, then it's not a transformative experience we're having with Christ. The transformative experience is when we're yoked to him and we begin to learn that his heart is different. He's lowly, he's gentle, he's meek, and he calls us to be a part of that with him. Rush, uh, you could come, worship team, if you have a song. <clears throat> As I said before, how do we learn of Christ in this way? By being yoked to Him. Um, and I, I'll, I'll just, for truth in advertising, being yoked to Him is not a simple prospect for us. It requires us to lay down our will. It requires us to set aside certain things. To be yoked to Christ is a challenge to the person, our own personhood. But when we choose that, it's a beautiful and glorious place where we live in the grace and the glory of God in Christ Jesus. So we learn of Christ by being yoked to Him. And my question, I was thinking, how do we encourage our children and those around us to love Christ above all things in this world. How do we do that? It can't be, it can't be, uh, I don't believe it can be authoritarian. I don't believe, it. yes, we need to teach scripture. Yes, we need to teach them the principles of the kingdom. But something else has to happen in our lives so that others see what it means to live yoked to Christ. I think when I, uh, to love Christ above all things in the world, the way we do it, it isn't, really isn't doctrine, though that's important. It's not scripture memorization, though that's important. It is seeing us enthralled and enraptured with the love of Christ towards us. That's, what other people, that's what our children will see is when we are enthralled and enraptured with who Jesus Christ is and the mercy of God represented in him. I think about my, my upbringing. 
I don't really remember scripture memorization, even though, I don't know. I don't remember specifically having my parents instruct me, and though my father was a pastor till I was around 10 or 11. I don't remember those things, but I think what I remember and what is transformational for me is seeing them live for Christ in their imperfect way and live it out day to day, loving the beauty of who Christ is. Woo, I get excited about that. If you ever knew my father, he'd get excited about that too. He'd look at the snow on the ground and he, what do you see? What would he see? Jesus. <laughs> he would see the glory of God in Christ Jesus in all of nature. He wasn't perfect. But if all he did was teach me guidelines and rules, I think I need to see him fall in love with Jesus. And my mother faithfully serving over through trials and tribulations in her life. Loving Christ. That's what our children need to see. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But we can fall in love with Jesus and be yoked to him in a way that is transformational. So why don't we, we sing? And then I'll close this in prayer. Let's stand together and sing. There is love that came for us, humble to a sinner's cross. You broke my shame and sinfulness. You rose again, victorious. Faithfulness none can deny. Through the storm and through the fire, there is truth that sets me free. Jesus Christ, who lives in me. You are stronger, you are stronger. Sin is broken, you have saved me. It is written, Christ is risen. Jesus, you are Lord of all. No beginning and no end. You're my hope and my defense. You came to seek and save the lost. You paid it all upon the cross. You are stronger. You are stronger. Sin is broken. is risen Jesus you are Lord of all so let your name be lifted higher be lifted higher be lifted higher let your name be lifted higher be lifted higher be lifted higher let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. Let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken. You have saved me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus, you are Lord of all. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, 
Christ is risen, Jesus, you are Lord of all. I'm going to ask Dave and Lisa to come up and Kirza and Tom and Marvin because uh, so we did we did our dedication and grandpa and grandma got here late <laughs> so we want it we want it you know what we'll do is we'll ask them to uh, is Tirza here okay come on over you guys remember so so especially after we said how important family is we have to <laughs> we have to we have to give them a chance. But you know what I'd like to do is uh, quite, a, quite a team you guys have. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'd like to offer Dave, Marvin. Would you like to pray? And then I'll close. How's that sound? Yeah, sounds good. Well, Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for our little boy here, Lord. The, another <coughs> arrow in our quiver, oh God. A great arrow, Lord, that's going to go far, Lord, and reach the world with the gospel, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you just bless us all these grandchildren, and we are so blessed. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the wisdom to raise these children right, to have them um, raise their children that love the Lord also, Lord, that they'll be strong in the Lord and grow and mature. Amen. Lord, we just ask that you would uh, guide their parents to uh, yes, guide them yes. in your ways, always. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Father, we thank you again because I see, I see family, I see generational uh, blessing, generational purpose. So we just thank you for this family. I thank you for Dave and Lisa. I thank you for Marvin and Lord, their, their representation of you to their family. And so we just, Lord, believe that their blessing, their lives, the things you've poured into them are now being poured into this next generation. And we thank you for that. We give you praise for that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm glad we could conclude you guys. I wondered why I didn't see you earlier, so I'm glad. <laughs> they had to try from Messina, so that was... Uh, but, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, I pray as we go today, let your goodness just be shed abroad in our hearts in a fresh way. Let us fall in love with you, Lord Jesus, all over again. Let our hearts be enthralled with your beauty, your goodness, your mercy, and your truth. Let us follow after you all the days of our lives, O oh God. You are so good. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. If you would, we have prayer teams up here. They'd love to pray with you. And I just encourage you, maybe you, you have had an image of God that is not an image of grace. It's not, a, it's not an invitation. Crack that door open. <laughs> See, I, I might try to be yoked to this Jesus. I, if he really is gentle and lowly, I'm willing. You know, that's all it takes. It just takes this little step of faith towards him who calls us to experience his goodness. It's so amazing and profound that we get to rejoice in that as believers. And so I encourage you, if you have a heart to seek, just crack it open. Or maybe you have someone who has an understanding of God as austere and uh, authoritarian and ready to uh, rebuke you. Come to Christ, for he's gentle and lowly in heart. Be transformed by his grace and his mercy. So we also have books over there. You could, If you have questions about God, you, have, you can go in this Connect tent. There's books you can pick up there. We encourage you to do that. Hallelujah. Please, they would love to pray for you. Look how ready they are to pray. So if you have a need... Go forward, and they'll love to pray for you. Lord, we go in your grace, your goodness, and your mercy. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen.
are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of all, you are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are 